Hi parents, thank you for checking out this tutorial. I'm Elaine from Great Solutions, Jimmy Math. In the past tutorials, I have been covering PSLE Paper 2 questions. This time, we will be looking at some multiple choice questions involving area and perimeter. The key takeaway of this video is to guide you on how to ace area and perimeter questions and score better, if not full marks, for the MCQ section of the PSLE paper. If you stay till the end of this video, you will be learning how to solve area and perimeter questions much more effectively using this combined length method. I will be using five examples from past year prelim papers, each tackling different shapes to demonstrate this combined length method that will be very, very helpful to the student taking their PSLE papers this year. Now let's take a look at the first question that's taken from Aitong School. The figure below is made up of a semicircle and two squares. The length of xy is 10 cm and the length of the larger square is 6 cm. Find the perimeter of the figure and give your answer in terms of pi. Usually pi is given as 22 over 7, a fraction, or 3.14. Now, sometimes the question requires you to give your answer in terms of pi. That means we simply use pi, the symbol pi, to represent 22 over 7 or 3.14. Firstly, let's analyze this shape. The perimeter is made up of the circumference of a semicircle, two sides of this square, two sides of this larger square, and this little awkward length over here. Now, the combined length method basically means that you do not have to work out every individual length. We do not need to know what this awkward length is because that would take up a lot of time. Eventually, the student would have to add up all the lengths to find the perimeter. So why not just find the combined length right away? Let me highlight some of the combined lengths that we can use for this question. Firstly, we know that the vertical length from x to y is 10 cm. So when we transfer over, this length and this length also makes up 10 cm. Using another color, we will now look at the horizontal length. Since this is a square, this length here is also 6 cm. When we transfer it downwards, that means these two lengths will also add up to 6 cm. So now it's clear that we have a 6 cm here, another 6 cm here, and a combined length of 10 cm here. Our final job is simply to find the circumference of a semicircle. That would be half times pi times diameter, which is 10 cm. So doing a simple calculation, that would give us 5 pi cm for the circumference of the semicircle. Now all we have to do is to add everything up. So 5 pi plus 6 plus 6 plus 10, that would give us 5 pi plus 22 cm. And that's our answer to this question, option number 2. Let's look at the next question taken from Henry Park Primary School. Maliki cut a square piece of paper measuring 12 cm in length into two pieces of squares and two pieces of rectangles as shown in figure 1. He arranged the pieces to form a big triangle as shown in figure 2. What is the perimeter of the big rectangle in figure 2? First things first, this is a rearrangement question, which means one shape has been rearranged to form another shape. Now what many students will do is to find the perimeter of figure 1 and take that as the answer. Now what we need to understand is that when one shape is rearranged to form another shape, the perimeter will not necessarily be the same. 
The only information we are provided is that the length of the original square is 12 cm. So let's write that down first. Other than that, we are not really provided with any other lengths. So what we need to do is to study the relation among all the different lengths in the shape. Let's focus on figure 2. We can see clearly that two breadths of the small rectangle makes up one side of the square. So if the breadth is one unit each, that means one side of the square is two units. Now let's look at figure 1. We can see clearly that two sides of the square makes up the length of the rectangle. So what that means is 2 units and 2 units makes up the length of the rectangle, which is 4 units. So now we know that this part is 4 units. If we focus on this side of the square, we can see clearly that 1 unit plus 2 units plus 1 unit makes up 12 cm. So that means 4 units is equal to 12 cm. So 1 unit would be 12 divided by 4 and that gives us 3 cm. In order to find the perimeter of figure 2, we have to work out how many units there are in total. So we have 2 units here, another 2 here, 2, 2, 4 for the length, 2, and finally 2. So let's add all of these up. We have 6 sets of 2 units that makes up 12 units and 2 sets of 4 units which makes up 8 units and a total of 20 units. Since 1 unit is 3 cm, 20 units would be 20 times 3 and that gives us 60 cm. And that's our answer to this question. Option number 2. Let's take a look at the third question that's taken from CHIJ, St. Nicholas Girls School. The figure shows a rectangle ADEG. The area of triangle BCF, which is this small triangle over here, is 21 square centimeters. What is the total area of the unshaded parts in ADEG? So unshaded parts would mean this, this, and this. Now, let's recap the formula for area of triangle, and that is half times base times perpendicular height. In short, this is B and H. The challenging part of this question is that while we know length AD is 21 cm, we do not know the individual lengths of D to this point, this point to C, C to B, and B to A. We also should not make any assumptions. So using the combined length method, we can effectively work out the area of multiple triangles all together. We can see that all these triangles over here share the same perpendicular height of A to G. Although we do not know the individual lengths, we know that the combined base is 21. So in just one step, we can actually find the combined area of all the unshaded triangles and BCF. And since we know that BCF is 21 square centimeters, we can simply subtract that from the total area and find our answer. Again, since they share a combined length of 21 cm, that makes the base 21. So half times base times the perpendicular height of 14 cm. So doing some simple cancellation, the answer here is 147 cm square. So 147 minus 21, and that gives us 126 cent square centimeters. And that's our answer to this question. Option number four. Now let's take a look at our fourth question from Rosyth's school. And this question is dealing with circles. 
The figure below is made up of four identical circles inside a square. The length of the square is 28 centimeters. Find the perimeter of the shaded part. So I've shaded the perimeter that we are supposed to calculate. And let's analyze this. Now what many students will do is that they would calculate the individual lengths and then add them up. Now, while this is not wrong, and while this is very systematic, it is very time consuming. The objective of this tutorial is to use the combined length method to save a lot of time when solving such questions. At the same time, this also prevents students from making careless mistakes because the fewer steps there are, the lower the chance of making careless mistakes. Now, since we know that two semicircles make up one circle, four semicircles would make up two circles. So we should work out the circumference of two full circles right away. So four semicircles equals to two full circles. Now looking at the horizontal lines here and here, we can see that the length from here to here is actually the radius of one circle. So we actually have one radius, two, three, and four all together. So we can work out four radius, which is actually two diameters right away. Since the length of the square is 28 cm, and 28 cm is the length of two diameters, we actually already have this part settled. So all we need to do now is to find the circumference of two full circles. Since two diameters make up 28 cm, one diameter would make up 14. So the circumference of two circles will be 2 times pi times 14. So doing some simple um, cancellations, that would give us 88 cm. Alright, so all we need to do now is to add these two numbers together. And that would give us 116 cm. And that is our answer to this question. Option number 3. So you can see how we reduced um, a question that usually would take 4 steps into 2 steps. That is really time saving. Now moving on to the last question taken from Rosive School, we will be looking at a composite figure made up of four identical right angled triangle. Now each right angled triangle has a perimeter of 36 cm. So for this question, we are required to find the perimeter of this figure. The only two information we have is the perimeter of one right angled triangle and that is 36 and we are also provided with the base length of the triangle which is 9 cm. Now I have highlighted the parameter of this figure and we can see clearly that it doesn't involve these lengths over here, right? So when students first look at this question, it is kind of confusing because we do not know the lengths here and here, right? But let's not forget the combined length method. We already know that the perimeter of one triangle is 36. And if you analyze the figure, you realize that here we have one, two, three, and four bases. Can you see that in order to work out the length of just the pink portion here and here, we simply need to take 36 cm and subtract 9 and 9. And that would give us the length of the pink portion here and here. Okay, so let's go ahead and work that out. 36 minus 9 and 9 would give us 18 cm. And this figure is made up of four sets of this 18 cm, right? One, two, three, and four. So we simply multiply 18 by four, and there we have it. Our answer to this question, option number one. 
I hope this tutorial is helpful in showing how effective the combined length method is. If you have any questions for me or have any comments about this video, please feel free to leave a comment in the comment box below. Also like and subscribe to this channel for more free tutorials. If you're keen on finding out more about our online Zoom classes, please visit www.greatsolution.com.sg